In calculus, Newton's method is an iterative method for finding the roots of a differentiable function f equals zero. In optimization, Newton's method is applied to the derivative f of a twice differentiable function f to find the roots of the derivative equals zero, also known as the stationary points of f method. In the one-dimensional problem, Newton's method attempts to construct a sequence xn from an initial guess x0 that converges towards some value x asterisk satisfying f equals 0. This x asterisk is a stationary point of f. The second order Taylor expansion ft of f around xn is, we want to find delta x such that f is maximum. We seek to solve the equation that sets the derivative of this least expression with respect to delta x equal to zero. For the value of delta x equals minus f, f, which is the solution of this equation, it can be hoped that xn plus 1 equals xn plus delta x equals xn minus f, f, will be closer to a stationary point x asterisk. Provided that f is a twice differentiable function and other technical conditions are satisfied, the sequence x1, x2, will converge to a point x asterisk satisfying f equals zero. Geometric interpretation The geometric interpretation of Newton's method is that at each iteration one approximates f by a quadratic function around xn, and then takes a step towards the maximum, minimum of that quadratic function. Note that if f happens to be a quadratic function, then the exact extreme m is found in one step. Higher dimensions. The above iterative scheme can be generalized to several dimensions by replacing the derivative with the gradient f, and the reciprocal of the second derivative with the inverse of the Hessian matrix hf. One obtains the iterative scheme often Newton's method is modified to include a small step size gamma instead of gamma equals 1 this is often done to ensure that the wolf conditions are satisfied at each step xn xn plus 1 of the iteration. Where applicable, Newton's method converges much faster towards a local maximum or minimum than gradient descent. In fact, every local minimum has a neighborhood n such that, if we start with x0 n, Newton's method with step size gamma equals 1 converges quadratically. Finding the inverse of the Hessian in high dimensions can be an expensive operation. In such cases, instead of directly inverting the Hessian it's better to calculate the vector delta x equals xn plus 1 xn as the solution to the system of linear equations, which may be solved by various factorizations or approximately using iterative methods. Many of these methods are only applicable to certain types of equations. For example the Koleski factorization and conjugate gradient will only work if HF is a positive definite matrix. While this may seem like a limitation, it's often useful indicator of something gone wrong. For example if a minimization problem is being approached and HF is not positive definite then the iterations are converging to a saddle point and not a minimum. On the other hand, if a constrained optimization is done, the problem may become one of saddle point finding, in which case the Hessian will be symmetric indefinite and the solution of xn plus 1 will need to be done with a method that will work for such, such as the LDLT variant of Koleski factorization or the conjugate residual method. There also exist various quasi-Newton methods, where an approximation for the Hessian is built up from changes in the gradient. If the Hessian is close to a non-invertible matrix, the inverted Hessian can be numerically unstable and the solution may diverge. In this case, certain workarounds have been tried in the past, which have varied success with certain problems. One can, for example, modify the Hessian by adding a correction matrix Bn so as to make Hf plus Bn positive definite. One approach is to diagonalize Hf and choose Bn so that Hf plus Bn has the same eigenvectors as Hf. 
but with each negative eigenvalue replaced by greater than zero. An approach exploited in the levenberg marquardt algorithm is to add a scaled identity matrix to the Hessian mu i, with the scale adjusted at every iteration as needed. For large mu and small Hessian, the iterations will behave like gradient descent with step size 1 mu. This results in slower but more reliable convergence where the Hessian doesn't provide useful information.